Okay, let's take a closer look at the scientific method and working scientifically. So we're going to look at everything from how to ask scientific questions, what to do once we started asking those questions, how to design experiments to help with that, what makes science good science, how to analyze everything, and how to determine at the end uh, if you've actually answered your orig original question through drawing conclusions, and most importantly, at the very end, is evaluating your method and saying, did my procedure, did my experiment that I designed or created actually answer my question? Is it reliable? Can I be confident in my data? If I share this with other people, will they look at the data and agree that it is a good experiment and understand my results? Or will they be like, well, well I don't really know what you did here and it's not so clear I, mean, I don't really believe your results and you don't want that to actually happen so a good way to avoid that is to plan out your experiment really really carefully so let's start taking a look at asking scientific questions so scientists are making observations uh, about their world they're walking around and they're just asking why are things the way they are and they can be big questions or they can be very specific questions uh, any question is a good question and even if someone else has asked that question before it's part of science uh, to actually constantly check to see if the answers to the questions we were asking before are still valid and if we need to re take a look at a lot of the things again like for example uh, that the earth is a sphere, right? People didn't think the, didn't believe that the earth was a sphere. So someone came up with an answer, said the earth is flat. And then they looked at it again and figured out the earth is not flat. And they collected evidence to do that. Now, obviously we can take pictures from outer space. And so we know the earth is round. We know the earth is a sphere. So here we go. Uh, they make observations and then they ask questions. Then they design experiments and do investigations to try to collect data to try to answer their questions. They try to make predictions about the outcome of the investigations. Then they're going to carry out the investigation and see if the predictions are right or not. And that can help them determine if they can publish a paper and share their scientific evidence with the world as well too. Here we're gonna get into some specific vocabulary about designing investigations. You might have discussed this in class already, but anything that might affect the outcome of an investigation is called a variable. So things that could affect the outcome of an investigation. So if we're investigating things that can help this plant grow, uh, you might say water, you might say fertilizer, you might say sunlight, you might say the type of soil, all of those things that could affect the outcome are variables and then we have to kind of group those into depending on the type of experiment what type of variable they are so this is important an independent variable is something that I change okay independent variable is something that I change that's what helps me to remember it because the next word is gonna sound a lot like independent so independent variable is something that I change that I am deliberately manipulating in an experiment I want to see how this thing that I'm changing affects the outcome. The dependent variable is the thing that changes as a result, as a result of what I'm changing. So if I put, if I allow this plant to have more sunlight and I am manipulating the amount of sunlight by, I don't know, moving the plant closer or further away. So the amount of sunlight would be the independent variable. And then how much the plant grows is the dependent variable because the plant growth depends on the amount of sunlight and then there's one more type of variable which is called the control or actually there's many different controlled variables that you need to actually keep controlled in an experiment so what do we say about our plant over here sorry the plant is red plants are supposed to be green but in this case we're just gonna have to accept that in my example the plants are red so I said sunlight could affect the plant I said soil could affect the plant I said water could affect the plant Fertilizer could affect the plant, but I'm not interested in all those other things. I'm not interested in soil or air or other types of things. I'm interested in sunlight and if that affects the plant growth. So what about those other things then? Soil volume, plant pot volume, the type of plant, the concentration of gases in the air, the temperature, the amount of fertilizer, the type of fertilizer, all those things are things that I need to keep the same. 
I need to keep the same in the investigation so that I know that the reason why the plant is growing is because of the sunlight that I am manipulating. Okay, that's a good word to know. Manipulate. Manipulate means to uh, directly control, and it's good for this uh, uh, independent variable. So I'm going to write it right here in my beautiful handwriting. Manipulate. Manipulate. Try to use that with your friends, with your family. They'll be like, whoa. They know how to use the word manipulate. So here's a question. How does the mass of dog food eaten by Fido, the white nose, this is not the famous dog you think it is. The nose has changed color, so this is called uh, the white-nosed Scooby. So if you were to ask this question right here, how does the mass of dog food eaten by Fido, the white-nosed Scooby, affect his body mass right here? Can you figure out what is the independent variable in this question? What is the dependent variable? And what are some things I need to keep control? Pause the video right now and try to answer that uh, on your own. And then I'm going to tell the answer in about two seconds. Pause it. All right, so coming back, hopefully you paused. If you were to ask this question, the thing that I'm controlling in this experiment is the mass of dog food. That's the independent variable. Mass of dog food is the independent variable. It's getting messy here. Uh, his body mass depends on the mass of dog food, so that is the dependent variable. And what are some controlled variables? Anything else that would affect Fido's body mass, exercise, amount of sleep, uh, water that's drank, and other types of snacks that are not the food that is given inside uh, this actual bowl right here. Okay, so that's something that you need to take a look at there as well. So a few more notes here on asking scientific questions. Remember, we have observing, developing a question, identifying the variables, which is really important, independent, dependent, controlled variables. So here's a quick example for you to take a look at. So soccer balls don't bounce as high as tennis balls is someone's observation. And they ask this question, how does the size of a ball affect how high it bounces? And so somebody here wants to do an experiment. Let's call him, I don't know, George. So George has got, that's a giant soccer ball, by the way, and these are little tennis balls. So how does the size of the ball affect how high it bounces? Can you pause the video and ask yourself, uh, what is the independent variable, the dependent variable, and what are the controlled variables? All right, independent variable is the size of the ball. That's what I will change in the experiment. How high the ball bounces depends on the type of ball, so that's the dependent variable. Hope you're getting a hang of this. Other variables that could affect the bounce height, but we don't want to actually change our controlled variables. The height that the ball is dropped from, the type of ball, the surface that the ball is dropped on, these can all make a big difference, right? Uh, so you want to keep those things the same as well too. And then you come up with some kind of prediction. I think that the smaller the size of a ball, the higher it will bounce. You carry out your experiment, you collect data, analyze it, and then you draw conclusions and evaluate your experiments. Uh, later, in later videos, we're going to look at each one of those steps in detail and how we can actually make sure we do that properly, starting with planning investigations next. All right.